Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you a technique that I've been meaning to get to for quite a while and I haven't had a chance to get to it until today. And this is going to be a pretty quick and easy video. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get a different type of texture. You know how we usually do our decorative droplets? We try to make them nice and round and smooth. Well, this time I'm going to put a spin on it and we're going to go with a little bit of an edgier look. So I'm going to make them into spikes. And one thing you have to be careful with this is you don't want anything that's very sharp. And when you, you know, think of the word spike, obviously <laughs> that's a pointy sharp thing. So you are gonna need to take care when you create these that um, you're not making anything that's going to scratch you or the wearer. Or anything like that but we can still get that same technique and it's pretty cool so let's get started now on my workbench right here I have two pieces that I had put a base amount of solder on I have a cabochon that I surrounded with copper foil and I put just a coating of solder around the edges and you know if you need to know how to do that you can watch one of my other videos I do go into that uh, quite extensively and also my new book soldering iron jewelry which is a complete complete course in how to make all kinds of jewelry with a soldering iron is now available on Amazon so I'll put a link to that above and below so if you need to get started and you want to you know catch up or maybe learn some new techniques you definitely should check that out so the second piece that I have is another kind of cab it actually is a has a hole in it so anything with a hole in it is a bead <laughs> and I got this in like a grab bag pile of stuff and what I did was I I put copper foil around the edges just like this one and you can see the difference that this one is nice and smooth and this one I ran a wire around it and I soldered the wire to it and you can see the technique for that in my I think it was my last or my second last video which is the Art Nouveau style scarab necklace pendant and I show that technique in there. So to get started I have my soldering iron heating up, I have liquid flux and a flux brush, I have lead free solder and I have a pair of old pliers that I only use for soldering. So the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to start, oh gosh, I think we're going to start with this one and maybe we won't even do this one because here's the thing. These are going to get hot when we solder them, so you don't want to hold it with your hands. I usually use a pair of pliers. I like these round nose ones because they come to a point and you know you can get into small areas and you can hold small things with them, but it's super, super hard to hold on to a cabochon with these. I mean, with the rounded edge, and plus you don't want to scratch this. You want to be careful, but you know, um, it's going to slip and slide. So this one has more of a, I can get a better grip on it. So I'm going to use this one for our demonstration today. So to get started, I'm going to just um, give it a, like I, I had soldered this before, like I said, I added the wire to it and I washed it. It's been sitting on my workbench. So if you ever are soldering something and, you know, you need to quit the project for some reason or another, whether you have to walk away for, you know, I'm talking more than a few hours. Uh, a day or two or maybe it's something you started and you're going to work on it later down the road or you're not sure what you want to do or or whatever um, you always want to wash that you want to wash it really well you want to get off all that flux and that isn't you know acidic and it's going to eat away into either your stone or you know even your copper your metal your wire so this piece is nice and clean so once again I have to coat it with some flux and I'm going to choose which side I'm going to work on I think we're going to go with the rounded side so I'm just going to go around this and give it some some flux because you know you cannot solder without flux flux will not adhere to the metal without flux and you know what that does is it removes the oxidation from the metal and it allows the solder to adhere to the metal and I go into that again in depth in my book soldering iron jewelry so if you want to know the hows and whys of everything that is like the best place to start so you know when I start soldering I usually turn my iron kind of way up high and people always ask you know well what temperature blah blah it's different for every person for every soldering iron every rheostat you're going to use I can't tell you an exact temperature you need to experiment that is how we 
figure out how we do what we do. We try trial and error, we try one thing, if it doesn't work, we try the next thing. So I'm gonna start probably about halfway through this time. So when I say halfway through, I mean on the little dial on my iron temperature control, instead of zooming it all the way up to the highest, which is like number six or seven, I'm going halfway instead. So we're gonna go like three or four. And what I'm gonna do is this iron is hot, but I'm going to hold it against the solder. And if it's not gonna melt that solder at all, I'm gonna to need to turn the iron up. And I've got some, and you'll know when your iron is super hot, um, you'll hold it against that solder and boop, it's gonna come away immediately. If you have to hold it on there for a second, you know, your iron is kind of moderately hot. Now for regular soldering, I turn it up. And when you're doing decorative stuff, you probably wanna turn it down a bit. Like I said, you're gonna to need to experiment to figure out what temperature works best for you. And it won't always be the same every time you turn your soldering iron on. There's a lot of things that, you know, affect that. And one of them is like, the temperature of the room you're working in. I find a lot of times when I'm working in the middle of winter and it's kind of chilly in the room, the soldering is different. You know, it, it, it's kind of hard to explain. You kind of have to know what I mean by experience, experiencing it firsthand, but um, it doesn't, you know, melt the same way. It is a little bit slower. Uh, so I have a drop here now and I'm gonna start right at the peak point of this cab that I have. I'm just gonna call it a cab. And I'm gonna, I have a wire kind of poking out there. I'm gonna co wanna cover that up anyway. So I'm gonna put a drop on here and I'm gonna experiment and I'm gonna see, you know, what the temperature of this iron is because you'll be able to tell by, look at that, that peak. And that is the look we're going for, but I don't want to have a peak that is going straight up. That's kind of you know, poke somebody. Now this style, aside from you thinking of spikes being like, you know, punk rock or anything like that, um, it's also very cool for making things such as talons for, you know, birds of prey, dragons. Maybe you want to make like a soldered little uh, like a magic wand with a crystal on the end, you can make these droplets and make them look like little dragon talons that are like gripping onto the crystal. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to use my soldering iron to manipulate this drop so that point is not going straight up, but it's coming like in toward my cap. So it's gonna take a little bit of practice. I may have to do it a few times and that's how it is with the soldering, especially, you know, like the stamped solder, like you can't expect to sit and put, you know, flux down on your metal and then get your soldering iron already in your solder and then stamp it and that it's, you're gonna get this perfect impression the first time. That is just not how this material works. You often, very often need to do it once, twice, three, four, five times, a few times uh, until you get the perfect result. And that not even has to do with like, that doesn't even have to do with like your level of expertise. I mean, I'm an expert in this. I've been doing it for many years uh, and I still have to do it over and over again because it's just the way the material is and how it works and all the different things that go along with it. Like, you know, the temperature of your iron and the temperature of the room and all those things. So I'll stop gabbing and we'll start working. So let me try to zoom in a little bit more for you and make sure that I'm in focus because it would be terrible if I'm not. All right, so I'm gonna grab this dot and I'm gonna do this a, a few times and I'm going to kind of pull it this way. And I may need to add more solder. You can always take it away. You can always like melt it off. So I'm going to just kind of drag it this way. Another thing you can do is you can put like an armature below, like a piece of wire going this way, like to build your solder upon that. And a lot of this is just like, you know, messing around with the iron temperature. So let's see where we're at with this. Now I'm building up a pretty big piece and it, I'm gonna drag it out very slowly and there you have it, okay? And I'll do it a few times so you can see. Now that's a pretty sharp point on the end of that. And one of the things you could do is if you could take a file, I like to use one of those acrylic nail files that are made for like acrylic nails, 
those are great, but you don't want to really file against a stone, especially any kind of stone that may be dyed or treated or soft like a pearl. You'll mark that stone or, or that crystal and you don't want to do that. So the best thing to do is to very carefully go back in and just melt off that very little tip so it's not at, let's have like a needle sharp point. <laughs> like that one got pretty perfect. So I'm just gonna like touch it a little bit. And now my, my iron isn't super, super hot. So it might take me once or twice to just get the right point of my iron. There we go. So I don't wanna take it down too much, but I think I did it pretty well there. Now I don't wanna put my hand on and feel it because I don't want to get flux on my skin. You wanna avoid that. You can wear gloves if you like. Um, I just try to avoid, you know, touching it. And you know, I do sometimes, I wash my hands a lot. Also, you'll find watching my videos that a lot of times I'll stop and, you know, or in the book, you know, when doing projects, um, wash your project, dry it, now come back, let's do the next part. And it's because we're handling the, the project, you know, you don't want to get stuff all over your hands. So let's do another one. I'm going to go next to it. I'll give it a little bit of space, maybe about a little bit more than a quarter inch. And I'm just putting a drop on there. I'm just got a little bit, build it up, put a little bit more. Now you don't want to go in with a gigantic drop right away because what's going to happen? It's probably just going to roll right off of your project. So it turns out that I didn't have to fiddle with my temperature yet. So I'm at, let's see, the rheostat that I'm using right now goes up to, it looks like five and I'm set right around three. So if you have one that goes up to five, you might want to try starting in at three. And now if your solder just isn't melting at all, you need to turn up the heat. So you turn up your rheostat, turn up your soldering iron. If your solder is just like rolling off your project, then it's way too hot. So there's another one that I did, but I'm gonna, I'm going over it again because I'm not happy with it. You wanna make it look the best that you can. There we go. And I'll do another one before I go back and get that pointy edge off there. Now you can leave that point on there if you want it, you know, really looking spiky. But if you're selling your jewelry, you want to make sure you don't have anything that's ever going to scratch someone. You know, that's why we tuck little wire ends in when you're wire wrapping. And we remove burrs from metal. And not only are they unsightly, but, you know, you don't want to scratch anybody or yourself and, you know. That wouldn't be nice. So we wanna always make sure that you can run your fingers over it and that it's not gonna snag your skin or your clothing or anything like that. So here's one more I'll show you. Uh, the cab is like sliding out of these pliers. Sometimes I'll take like a damp paper towel and, and fold it up real small and like use that to hold it if I'm you know desperate to hold something. Some people use like, um, you can use like a close pin. That doesn't really work very well, but you could try. Depends on what you're holding. Okay, so this one is being difficult. I need to put more flux. It evaporates as you're working, so. Let's try this again. So I'm gonna hold it on there, make sure like it's, I'm waiting for it to go from my tip of my soldering iron onto the project. And I'm gonna just very slowly pull the soldering iron away, okay? And I wanna kind of make that one a little bit bigger. And you'll, you can see, that there's a texture on there. You can see almost like where I pull it, you know, and I'll show you what we can do with that then. So I'm gonna remelt this, and it takes a second to remelt because we're at a lower temperature. Uh, let's see, do it again. And I'm just gonna slowly pull it out. This one's being finicky. I think I kind of got so much of the solder on this side instead. Let me try to like, I'm gonna have to reflux it and kind of remove some of that solder, melt it off, melt it onto the tip of my iron. I just drank like um, one and a half cups of coffee, so I'm a little bit shaky. Uh, okay, let's see here. I don't wanna have to melt it back into that area if I can't avoid it. So sometimes I'll just try to melt it all off like this. And what I should do is turn the temperature of my iron up a little bit to melt it off. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go over that later. But to show you the spiky part, once more. I almost wanna turn my iron up just a tiny little bit, but I'm like resisting 
because then I don't want to have to, you know, oh, it's too hot, so then it's going to be, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, I'm going up a little bit, just a couple millimeters. And while we wait for that to heat up, I'm just going to reflux this again and take a look at it. So let me zoom in. All right, here's another view. You can see how pointy those are, especially that second one that I made. Ooh, that looks sharp. So I'm gonna put a little flux on there and I'm just, try to stay in frame for you. I'm just gonna like, let me get rid of that first. See, I, did, I can already tell that I turned the temperature up. Look at how that melted so quick. I'm just gonna like touch that end. I don't wanna ruin my spike. I just wanna get rid of that very, very pointy end. Okay, so I'm gonna have to hold it up for one second so I can remove that glob. I might go off screen just for a second, just bear with me. Okay, so I got most of it off. So what I'm gonna try to show you, I'm trying to show you a close up. try to tip it up hmm, maybe that's not gonna work how about I'm trying to figure out how I can hold this and tip it this way and get a good shot for you to see all right let's try this I'm gonna multitasking with both hands here so I'm putting my blob there and then I'm slowly pulling it out and you know what that turning that temperature up that little tiny I probably turned it up four millimeters Look at that, now it won't work. So I'm turning it back down. Now it takes longer for it to get cooler when you're turning the temperature down than it does when you're turning it up. It'll heat up quicker. So what I'm saying is, like I just turned it down a little bit, but it's still gonna be too hot. So I have to kind of wait a couple seconds. So this is a good opportunity for me to melt some of that off. And it's very easily melting off. And I'll just kind of very gently tap those balls of solder off my soldering iron, like onto a safe place on my workbench. All right, so once again, I'm going to apply flux and we're going to pick up another drop of solder and we're going to try again. I'm going to start with a small drop of solder just to kind of make up the base, like where it's at. And then I'm going to add to it. And then I'm gonna pick up another tiny little bit of solder and if I can show you how much is on there, I don't know if you can see. Um, all right, and now I'm gonna very slowly just like hold it in. Got like a little tiny one there. There we go, there we go. It's a nice little spike. And then when you have that right temperature and like that one went pretty well for me, I'm just gonna like keep on trucking with it. I'm just going to keep on going and try to do a next one. But I think I need more flux because I do. All right, let's try one more here. Hmm, still seems too hot. So like I said before, it leaves like you'll see like those little like ripple lines, like a texture. And you kind of can't avoid that. Like that is just, it's because we're pulling it slowly and the solder that's like here is gonna start to cool. And every time we move it, it's gonna make like another line because it's cooling in that area. So like, eh, that one's not getting so good. Sorry guys, I'm trying. <laughs> So yeah, you have to have some patience to learn how to do this. And you know, like I said, once you get that temperature just right, and also I'm holding it at an angle. So you have to sometimes mess around like with what angle you're at. But these are the lines that I'm talking about. While that, I'm gonna turn that down, let it cool down for another minute or two. Okay, so right here. This. Let's see if I do it this way. I'm getting a shadow here, 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 here. Um, and what you can do for that, you can, if you're experienced and you're very, very careful, you can smooth that out if you very carefully, and I have to turn it this way because this is, I'm right-handed and I'm working this way. Let me try to, let me get it back on that. There. 
Okay, I'm gonna very carefully just touch that on there. And it's gonna, I don't wanna mess it up, you know? But you can put like a droplet on there. And you can build it up. Like I always say, and I said this in my second book, Soldered Alchemy, that solder is so, it's so cool because it's sculptable. That means you can carve it away, you can build it up. An example of the carving away would be melting it away with the tip of your iron or even doing like the rubber stamp technique, the stamp solder technique. And then I'm just gonna do this. And this is just like, you want your piece to look finished and polished. You know, the spikes are cool, but the spikes with the drops. Now, if I was making like a dragon's hand, right? That could be kind of like representative of like the knuckle, like the knuckles in a hand. Like look at a picture of what a dragon's hand looks like or a person's hand, I guess. <laughs> and do you see how it gives it like a more of it's a three dimensional look. It looks like something is like gripping around, right? So that's basically how you do these pointy soldered spikes. I put those droplets on the ends and I think they got very cool. It kind of looks like a knuckle. Now what you can do is you can work your way around. So if I wanted to actually turn that into like a dragon's hand of some sort. Now when I started out, I was just showing you like the spike technique. I wasn't actually figuring like where like fingers would go or talons would go. So if it looks a little displaced, it is. <laughs> But I'm going to show you, and like I said, it is difficult to hold this round item. What I would do is I would turn it this way, and I would lift it like this. So here's the front, okay? And I would work my way around this way. Now, I have the camera in my face. I'm going to have to move that just so I can show you real quick. Good. All right, so I'm just going to show you like this. So there's our nail, right? Our fingernail or talon. And then that would be the first knuckle. And then picking up more solder, what I would do is I would ex make like going this way. Like I'll just put like a tab of solder on that. And do you see how it formed like a kind of like a finger kind of thing? So maybe we should do a project in the future of making like one of those crystals with talons around it. That'd be pretty cool. I'd be up for that. If you would like to see something like that, leave a comment and let me know because that is how I know whether to do it or not. Yeah, I like that's pretty cool. So that's how we make spikes. And this was just a, you know, kind of a quick little tutorial to show you how that's done. And you know, you can make these in different sizes. You can make them bigger and like draw them out longer. Uh, like I said, just remember it takes some patience. This is something that you have to fiddle with. If you're a person who is very quickly, easily frustrated, <laughs> just know ahead of time, like you need to be like in a really good headspace and relax and, and know that it's not going to like be perfect the first time you do it. And that will lead you to more success. Like if you come into working in this type of art and this type of craft, you know, with no massive expectations of, oh, it's going to be perfect the first time I do it, you will be more successful. You won't get as frustrated as quickly. So let's take another look at this. And like I said earlier, my new book is out. It is called Soldering Iron Jewelry, and it teaches you everything you need to know about soldering iron jewelry. It teaches you about all of the tools, all of the chemicals, the materials, the different types of, you know, solder and like how it all works together. And then I have 20 awesome projects in there for you to try. So I would love for you to learn how to solder with me and join me for more videos. Check out the book. If you get it, I would love a review on Amazon. It's brand new. And um, I'll see you next time. And like I said, you know, if there's a project that you would be interested in with soldering, a technique, how about a technique using this, a project using this technique? Leave me comments below and let me know. Let's brainstorm together. What kind of project could I do with this technique? What would be cool? What would you like to see? All right. Thanks again for joining me. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye guys.